Hey everybody and welcome back, it's Fox with Foxio Games and this is another episode in our Dark Wraith playthrough. I'm calling this the Fox Chat Through because we're talking. It's a stream of consciousness playthrough. I just play and talk about whatever I feel like and right now it is March. Hey, hang on. Hang on, it is April 1st when I'm recording this. April Fool's Day, guys. Guess what? There is no coronavirus. It's not... Oh, wait, did I say... Oh my goodness, I said it. Hopefully, the YouTube filters don't catch me. Today's drink of choice is going to be hot black coffee mixed with some frothed up half and half. So it'll be kind of like a uh, cafe latte, sort of, but not really. Hey, uh, you know what? Is it time yet? No, let's let that brew for about another minute. This is the Dark Wraith playthrough where we have the whole Dark Wraith set and nothing else. So we even got a second thingamadoohickey so that I can soul suck people that I want to. So whoever I can or want to suck, I can. And that Wait. Disregard that last statement. Hey guys, can we strike that from the record? Yeah, edit that out, please. Okay, I, I have my editors working on that. I'm kidding, of course. <laughs> Obviously, I don't have editors. Oh wait, I already killed that guy. Okay. Uh, here at Foxio Games, I handle everything myself. Oh, but I, I couldn't get the repost. Ah, I can't even see him now. This is kind of silly, isn't it? Are you seeing this? If I don't, if I bounce off the walls, the enemy should bounce off the walls. That's just how I feel. I'm adjusting my microphone here. Well, guys, right now there's the big C something something V something something illness that's out there plaguing the world. Everyone's losing their shit over this bullshit. It's nonsense. The virus is real. It's the hysteria that's the hoax. So, do we need to be doing what we're doing? Shutting down public life? Locking everything down? Quarantining people? Hell no. This is retarded. Straight up retardedly stupid. So, the thing I want you to spread around, guys. The virus is real. The hysteria is the hoax. Tell your friends and family. Alright, guys. And make sure to report your friends and family if they're not following the quarantine. Report them to the police so they can get arrested. By the way, guys... Welcome to America, where a pastor was just recently arrested for nothing more than just straight up holding church service. Congratulations, guys. Freedom. May freedom ring. All right, here we go. In this playthrough, we're doing nothing particularly special other than playing through as a Dark Wraith, something I've never done before. I've used the Dark Wraith set. I've used the Dark Wraith Dark Hand in the... Whoops, my bad. In the Dark Wraith Sword, but never like all together because I actually don't like the dark hand as a shield it's not very good oh shoot all right we can get that guy but we got to get him from the back end what's what she said well, actually that doesn't make any sense never mind cancel that that's what she said comment oh oh my goodness did I one shot him almost oh wait I hit him once before too so there we go not bad huh you know what whatever that is I don't want it I don't want it. So, as far as this lockdown societal nonsense goes, guys, what I want you to keep in mind is evidence, facts, data, truth. All of these things essentially fall to the wayside. They all give way to what I call the narrative. What is the narrative? If you hear a horn in the background, that's because I am uh, playing with the windows open. And there's a horn going off. So, if you hear it, that's that. Oh, there we go. Good old Perry Repost. Perry Repost. Perry Repost. Perry Repost. I guess I'll pick this crap up. Most of it I'm going to drop anyway. Every time I get to Bonfire, I should just drop the junk I don't need. That would be a great idea for these playthroughs moving forward. Uh, the next playthrough I'll probably play as Ornstein. I think I have the whole Ornstein set ready to go. And with that, I'm pushing down the plunger on my French press, and we are going to pour us some coffee. I don't know if you can hear that, but I'm trying to mix it by pouring it because I forgot to bring something to mix it, so oh well. Life goes on. It's just it's just not uh, it's not right without being frothed. I need to froth it again with the, with the <laughs> I almost said chocolate, with the coffee in there. By the way, I've always thought, you know, I should get some cacao beans, raw, or not raw, but roasted cacao beans, natural cacao beans, whatever condition they need to be in. And what I should do is grind them up 
as if they were coffee beans. Then, brew it as if it were coffee. Has anyone ever done this? This seems like a no-brainer, so maybe I'm the idiot here and I have no idea how bad this... Oh, wait. Okay, so I'm using some NVIDIA game filter settings, but obviously there's a loss of uh, detail in some of this. Uh, let's go into color. Mm. Brightness and contrast. See, I, I don't... Mm. If you turn up the contrast, you kind of lose all the details, which sucks. Uh, highlights, shadows, negative 30%. What if I turn... No. Oh, no, don't. No. Okay. Let's see if we can move details underneath brightness and, brightness and contrast up. Does that make a difference? Not really. No. Okay. If we turn everything off, this is how it looks. So maybe we'll play like that. Uh, by the way, I, I keep setting that. You guys have seen me set it, but it won't uh, it won't save it from one playthrough to the next. So does NVIDIA intend for that to just disappear? Like you have to set it each and every time? Let me uh, click over here to my other monitor. Um, mm. Okay, well, I don't know. We're not going to worry about that. We'll play all natural for the moment. But I would like to get some mods, actually. I need to get some mods because the default contrast and color setup in this game unfortunately looks pretty crappy. I don't know why, it just does. It looks washed out, like the contrast is all wrong, and it looks slightly maybe bluish? I don't know. It's hard to describe. But uh, let me mix this coffee up a bit, guys. So, I would like to know in the comment section, how many of you out there are believing all this virus nonsense hysteria that the big evil virus is going to kill you and you have to shut down public life and cancel church and don't go out and stay 6,000 feet away from everybody and don't talk to your neighbors and report your neighbors if they do anything in violation and how many of you are actually buying into this I'm, I'm just curious because I have found myself just absolutely disgustedly disappointed with Americans because they are just buying this crap hook line and sinker what amazes me is you know I remember Hashtag resist. You guys remember that when Trump was elected? Hashtag resist. We're not going to do this. Everyone called Trump a liar. Everyone said that you, you can't trust trust the federal government. When Obama was in office, Republicans and conservatives couldn't trust the federal government. When Trump's in office, liberals and progressives can't trust the federal government. Everyone accuses different uh, news media organizations of being dishonest. Holy shoot. Oh, that was, a, that was the input lag bug right there. That was an interesting jump attack I did. Oh, nice. But now, suddenly, you see the majority of conservatives, Republicans, Democrats, liberals, progressives, whatever. I mean, even libertarian, oh, some libertarians. You see the majority of just about everybody just jumping on this bandwagon saying, yes, please, take all our rights away. Shut down public life. Close all the businesses. Take my job away. Just, just like that. Just like that. Everyone's just giving right on in, buying straight into it, no questions asked. And, you know, I'm sitting here asking questions. I'm like, well, wait a minute, wait a minute here. We have never done this before, ever. What What's the deal now? Why are we doing this now? And they, they tell you about, oh, well, it's a risk. And, you know, people who are immunocompromised or elderly people or people that have underlying conditions could die if they catch this illness. And I'm like, okay, yes, that's true. That's always been true. Uh, you have literally transferred colds, cold viruses, and flu viruses to old people, and they have literally died from the complications from those because they had underlying conditions. You've already done this, by the way. If you think this is something new with uh, this one illness that's going around that I, I'm trying not to name, if you think this is a new thing, it's not. There's nothing new about old people getting common viruses and then dying because of complications. That This has just been going on forever, for as long as human beings have interacted with each other. You've been doing it. You have literally, in a sense, killed grandma before and killed grandpa before and the immunocompromised, those with HIV or whatever other conditions they might have. Woo, I meant to jump off that, make it look more cool, but whatever. Cooler. Oh, shit. Oh, yes. Despite the elevation, we got the parry repost. All right. Next playthrough, uh, I think I'm going to do either a series called Attack on Masculinity or one that will have a name roughly similar to Masculinity Myths. 
or um, the Red Pill Myths series, the idea is to kind of bust some myths. Like one of the myths I, I love to bust is the myth of the deadbeat dad. Um, and I, when I say myth, a lot of you are probably thinking, well, what do you, what do you mean, man? I, I know a guy that was a deadbeat father. In fact, my dad was a deadbeat. I'm not saying that there's no such thing as a deadbeat. What I'm saying is that the stereotype that there are all these deadbeat fathers out there and that there aren't essentially deadbeat mothers is a lie. And, of course, people go, well, Fox, no one's saying all dads are deadbeats and no mothers are deadbeats. Yeah, that's kind of what we are saying because... We don't have a term for deadbeat mom. That's That sounds weird. You don't really see that. Type into Google, quotation mark, deadbeat dad, quotation mark, and see how many results you get. Then type into Google, quotation mark, deadbeat mom, quotation mark. Go to any news website and do the same thing. You'll find there are far, 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 far more uses of the word deadbeat dad, infinitely more. It's kind of like, here's, a, here's one for you, and I want you guys to do this. And this, for those that don't know... You'll see. Go to any news organization's website. That includes Fox News. Or if you know how to do it, you can use Google or Bing to search a website domain and just type in www.foxnews.com, www.nbc.com or abc.com, whatever the news websites are, npr.org or com or whatever it is. Type that in and just put in quotation marks. You probably don't need to use quotations, but put um, right wing. Yeah, quotation marks, right wing with or without a hyphen. Notice how many results pop up. Now type in left wing and notice it's a fraction of the results. And then ask yourself, hmm, why is it that the term right wing is so commonly used on the web, on the internet and websites, uh, news websites, and yet the term left wing is so rarely used? Why is that? Mm. So what I want you to start focusing on, guys, in general, is what I like to call the agenda in the narrative. Oh, sh oh I thought he was going to get me. The agenda is the goal behind everything, okay? The narrative is the, the essentially the story structure, the verbal, the written, the text, the data the structure around how they present the agenda to you. So the agenda is the idea, it's what they're trying to accomplish. So for example, if my if my agenda were to convince you that all women were bad, then my narrative would involve constantly showing you examples of how women do terrible things and that's all I would ever show you and I would never give any I would essentially never give any exemptions, and I would always try to push that agenda through the narrative. I would include links to all these horrible stories about women nonstop, and I would never say, oh, well, these are just examples, guys. Not all women are like that. Um, so also, if my agenda were to get you to think that uh, Trump is the greatest president ever and has no flaws, then again, my narrative would involve believing that Trump is perfect. I might post those images that shows like Jesus hovering over Trump saying, I chose you and <laughs> all this, you know, all this other crap trying to link religion and Trump together. The idea that if you oppose Trump, then you're, you know, opposing God essentially because God put Trump in, in office. Uh, those things would appear as the narrative. So the idea here is I want you to see when there's an I want you to see what the narrative is and then work backward from there. I think it's deduce, deduce. Am, am I using that term correctly? Guys? Sorry, deductive reasoning versus inductive reasoning. I want you to deduce from the narrative what the agenda is. So you're, you're essentially moving backwards. You look at what is being said, what is being pushed out there. Look at what, what are all the news websites saying? What are, what is the media saying? What is the government saying? And then work backwards from there and say, okay, what they're saying is this. What would that get them? What would be the purpose of them pushing this onto us? What would be the purpose of them telling us this? What are they trying to get us to believe? What are they trying to get us to do? And so you'll notice that right now, the narrative is all about the big, evil, horrible illness is going to get you. So what do you need to do? They're telling you that how horrible it is. They're broadcasting each and every single death, which a lot of those are lies, by the way. If you go onto social media, you will see people disputing the death 
the cause of death given as this illness, the one that is going out right now in April of 2020. It started back, you know, in, uh, I think it started in February of 2019, February or January, uh, or, or of January of 2020. I can't remember when it started, but anyway, it's the illness. It starts with a C. Uh, it's the same name as a type of beer, but I, I, I don't want to say it too many times and get this video flagged. So look at all that information. Look at what they're pushing out there. You know, they're doing things that they don't like. For example, they may occasionally give you statistics about the flu. The news tries to run scare stories every every year about get your flu shot. Ooh, the flu is killing people. But you don't see these one by one constant stories of another flu death. There have now been 25 flu deaths. There are now 100 flu deaths. Each and every jurisdiction giving each and every single flu death. And then you'll notice what also is going out. This C virus thing, they're putting out what I like to call the tug at the heartstrings stories, that heartstring tug story. Here's a little boy who died from the illness because you won't stay home. Stay home. Don't work. Lose your job. Shut down businesses. Give up your freedoms or little boys like this boy will die. Little Johnny died because you not staying the fuck at home. Or, you know, uh, Grandma Gertrude died because you won't stay at home. You notice it's it's the that's the agenda. The agenda is to get you to stay at home. The agenda is to get you to run out and buy a whole bunch of crap, stockpile it. The agenda is to get you to lose your job, to become dependent on the government. Because that's where the narrative is pushing us. The narrative is pushing us in that direction. Uh, let's see if we can... Oh yeah, we do have some Twinkly Titanite. So, uh, let's... Which one gives us the bigger bang for our buck? Two and two. Two, one... One, two, one. Okay, so I guess this one, maybe? Yeah. Oh, and we could upgrade it so many more times. Very nice, very nice. Let's learn a gesture. Thank you, buddy. Actually, do the gestures carry over? I guess they do, don't they? So it's kind of pointless. I wish there were an easier way to sell and get souls from items you don't need in this game. There just really isn't. Let's do this. Go over here in this corner and cry. Um, no, uh, go dump some junk. So you got to look at all this stuff, guys, and ask yourself, okay, we're told to do this. Actually, let me hang on to that just in case I don't have one of those already. I'm going to put that in the bottomless box. Uh, Ferris hat, I'm going to put that in the bottomless box, and I'm pretty sure we have it. Balder armor, do we have that? I'm pretty sure we do, but if not, I'll put that in there. Uh, okay. So... The only thing I hate about this bottomless box is there's... I wish there were a way to see what's not in the... Just what's not in the box. You can't... I, well, I just realized you can do a deposit all to box. But that's not really what I want to do. There are a couple things I want to hang on to. Oh! Said something passed by. Ferris hat. There it is. Okay, I think it's the Ferris hat and, this, and then the Balder armor. There we go. Uh, I already have Balder armor in there. Okay. Um, I'm going to take that set out. I'm going to take out the extra items that we have, too. Because we just don't need this many sets of everything, you know? I'm not going to go through the whole thing. I'll just do a few for now. And then we'll get some more later. Well, hang on now. The black did I never did I not upgrade the Black Knight set? Oh, I didn't upgrade the whole thing, did I? Some of these are, you know, the guaranteed pickups are the ones I have a shit ton of. Surprisingly, I only have one set of the Painting Guardian. Oh no, they don't drop that. Never mind. Those aren't dropped. They're Oh, I actually used the Gargoyle Helm at one point, and I upgraded it. Spiffy. The porcelain mask. Did I not upgrade Kieran's armor set either? Damn. Crazy. Yeah, I guess that makes sense because why would I waste... Uh, why would I waste all that twinkling? It doesn't really make that big a difference. We're not going to do more than one of each of these. Okay. Stone helm. Oh, well, we'll keep one of those. One of those. 
We don't need two of how You know, I could do a Havels, but I really hate the weapon. I really don't like the Dragon's Tooth. I just don't like it at all. Mask of the Father, there is never a reason to have more than one. Unless you drop it for somebody in uh, online play. Okay, so we got some extra junk for now. Let's dump some of them here. So anyway, I want you guys to look at and question everything. Now, I voted for Trump. I'm sure I'll vote for him again. There ain't no way in the hell I'm voting for Biden. Biden is an idiot. I've always thought that guy was an idiot. He has no idea what's going on. He is like straight up senile. Have you guys seen him talking? He has no clue what's going on. He forgets who his wife is. He doesn't know what he's running for anymore. He doesn't even know what position he's going for. Half the time he doesn't know what city or state he's in. The guy is just straight up lost it. I mean, it, it is... Oh, I want to dump that in there. That's right. I mean, it's sad, but it's reality. What's your way to get rid of that verification? If the item is not going to disappear, it shouldn't verify dropping it. Now, if the item would disappear and be gone forever if you drop it, then yes, verify the drop. And it would be nice if I could check multiple, but, you know, whatever. Hey, at least you can now use multiple items, like quantity items, multiple souls all at once. So they've made a, a few improvements in the remastered version. I have the remastered version for uh, Nintendo Switch. I thought I would play it more just out and about for fun, but when I'm out and about, I'm usually doing something, not playing games. Uh, and so the only time I really play it is actually with my son. I mean, he's not old enough to play it by himself yet, but he likes it. I think I told you guys, he calls it Big Monster Game. I really should get it on recording so you guys can hear it. It's really, really cute. He's like, I want to play Big Monster Game. It's like, Big Monster Game. He came up with that himself. And let me tell you something, that is a great description for this. Now, granted, all the monsters aren't big, but there sure are a lot of big monsters in this game. If I had to come up with a name, an alternative name for Dark Souls, it would probably be Big Monster Game. I wonder if there is a game named Big Monster Game. Probably some indie title. Some of those indie developers love to name their game something stupid. Alright. And let's dump that in there. Cool. <laughs> Holy shit, look at that. <laughs> Uh, access bottomless box. So much junk in here. I'll clean that up some other time. Some other time when I have more to talk about. How about that? Mm. Mm mm. That's not it. Oh, 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 oh. Nope, that's not it either. This is really good. It's just half and half in espresso. Oh, I don't need that. Or that. Okay. Look at that, it's just super bright. And I guess that other shit disappeared because we sat at the bonfire, huh? I have never played so many playthroughs that I was dumping stuff like this. It's kind of interesting. Alright, let's go get the gargoyles. Because hey, why not? And we pretty much have to. Although we could go fight... You know what? Let's do shit out of order, just for fun. Although I think we've already killed the Moonlight Butterfly, haven't we? I think we have. Let me check. Uh, no, I guess not. I don't have the Moonlight Butterfly thingy. Let's go do that. Let's get the Hydra and the Moonlight Butterfly, which I thought we did already. Am I crazy? And then we can also open up the way to Sif. Let's do that right now. Forgive me if I've already done all this, guys. Oh, okay, so we did have the very large ember, but actually, let's see. If he asked me for the divine ember, then yes, we have killed the moonlight butter. No, then we haven't. Okay, that's how we know. Oh, what was I going to do? Oh, yeah. So, uh, I am not going to say that I think the, the illness thing is fake. I think it is real. I think the hysteria around it is the hoax. I think what we're doing, what we are doing to the economy, which is people's lives, by the way. Let's let's not play games here, okay? Um, destroying the economy is not a safe thing to do. Uh, people pretend like shutting down the entire economy and putting up to one-third of Americans out of work, having the highest unemployment rate in the history of the country, going into a depression greater than the Great Depression... People act like that's the safe thing to do right now. That's not safe. That's not the safe route. 
okay guys please stop stop telling people this stop acting like you know continuing to go outside is dangerous but shutting everything down is the safe way to do it there is nothing safe about shutting down all of society nothing okay actually hang on i want to check something on my other monitor real quick and not get shot by lightning so let me alt tab out go over here mess with this doohickey sorry I got some live stuff going on on my other monitor while I'm doing my playthroughs. I'm just that important, guys. I'm just that important. Okay, here, we're back. Yeah, so this is not the safe way to do it. I want you to consider the following. There will be more domestic violence because of this. And as you know from my other playthroughs, men and women commit domestic violence in roughly equal numbers. Uh, men don't abuse women more. Uh, in fact, in non-reciprocal violence... That's when only one person is, is assaulting the other, one is abusing the other, but the other is not abusing in return. In non-reciprocally violent relationships, women are the violent party approximately 70, I think it was like 76% of the time. Something like that. It's the Oh, shit. I'm going to die, actually. <laughs> uh, I do not have a shield that is really good enough for this guy. So maybe do some hit and runs on him here. Man, this is this is risky. Uh, yeah, this is very risky. I don't really need to kill him, but it would be a good idea to have Demon Titanite because at some point I'm going to use a upgraded boss weapon or want to upgrade a boss weapon. Yeah, see how dangerous this is. Three shots and I'm dead, even from full health. And he's got a shit ton of health. I'm just missing like crit. I really cannot dodge this, can I? <laughs> I mean, it's my fault. Oh, shit. Woo! Let's try this again. What is he doing? I'm not even close to him up there. Will this work? Will I be able to, like, hit his foot and he'll just he'll just swing above me? It feels cheap, but hey, if it works. Oh, my goodness. I'm glad that didn't hit me. I had no stamina left to dodge. Okay. Okay. So, there will be more domestic violence. There will be domestic murders. People will die because they're cooped up together. There will be more divorce. Good or bad, there's going to be a shit ton of divorce being filed as soon as the courts reopen. You stick people together for a couple weeks, even a month or so. Tell them to stay at home. You know, take their jobs away so they have nowhere to go. Shut down all the restaurants and bars and everything else. There's only so much Netflix people can watch before they realize they fucking hate each other and want to get divorced. <laughs> you know what I mean? So there will be more divorce. There will be more crime. Because as people start getting, uh, start losing their pay, they're, they're no longer getting a check in the mail. Yeah, they're going to resort to crime. A lot of them, especially those that already have, there will be more thefts, more car thefts, more break-ins, more burglaries, more thefts from vehicles. Uh, there may be more violent crime too, robberies. There'll be more robberies of the few businesses that are left open. There will be a shit ton of civil unrest the longer this goes on. Uh, police will get hurt. Firefighters and paramedics will get hurt. There will be a shit ton more people on welfare. So that means inflation's going up. The value of the dollar will go down. So any money you have in savings is essentially going to be lower. Then let me uh, make an adjustment over here, guys. Okay. The stock market will crash, and so people relying on retirement funds, every every dollar they take out of their, their uh, retirement fund now is more money in the end. Because the way stocks work is they work like gold or silver. The value of it can go up or down. You have the same amount. Let's say you have 100 stocks and they're worth $10 each, so it's $1,000. Well, if the value of the stocks drop to $5 each, so now you only got a $500 worth of stocks. You have the same number of stocks, 100, but now the value has gone down by 50%. So, okay, so you're thinking whatever, right? Well, let's say that goes down even further. Oh, I don't have the secret, right? I could have sworn we'd already gotten that. Uh, they're emptying out the jails in a lot of places, so that means crime will go back up. But yeah, uh, oh yeah, retirement. Got people depending on their retirement. When the, the value of each stock goes down... You have to essentially sell more stocks to get the same amount of money. And so if you're taking out $2,000 this month from your retirement account, 
if the stock market is lower in value, if the stocks have gone down in value, you have to sell more stocks to get that $2,000. So essentially what's going to happen is that you are going to have to give, a, give up more of your retirement, more of the retirement stocks to get the same amount of money, essentially draining it faster. If, if it gets low enough, you may have to give up a significant portion of your stocks just to get a couple thousand dollars. And you'll run out of money quickly. And so people that should have had retirement good for the rest of their life will find that it only lasts them a few years and they'll be gone. Just completely drained because of the low value of the stocks, because of the depression that, that this is causing. Uh, another thing is a lot of parents are not seeing their kids. Um, there are parenting plans put in place that tell people when to exchange children. A lot of parents are not exchanging during this. They're using this as an excuse to alienate the other parent, usually the father. It's usually the father that's getting alienated. It's usually the mother that's not doing the exchanges she's supposed to do. So a lot of children will not see one of their parents, or even both possibly. If they're stuck somewhere in the custody of a child protective services, uh, that's probably on hold until later. There will be a ton of people who can't get work, who should have, like people um, graduating from high school and graduating from college that can't find anything to do and can't get their, uh, uh, they also can't do their student teaching. So those that are teachers, they also can't do their internships. Tons of people are being just furloughed, which is a nice way of saying you don't have a job right now and get no money. A lot of businesses will close their doors and never reopen. Okay, you have to understand something. These businesses still owe a ton of money for a lot of different things. They still have to pay all sorts of different things, okay? That includes uh, rent, utilities for the building, uh, all sorts of other miscellaneous expenses we wouldn't even think about. Things that we would never even consider. A lot of them are paying unemployment. A lot of them are trying to play, pay their employees but aren't bringing in any revenue. Um, if you guys are Bernie supporters, you're probably dumb enough to think that every company is rich. They're not, okay? They're not all rich and super wealthy. That's just not how reality works. Most businesses are small to medium, and they don't make a ton of money. They don't have enough money uh, on hand to just pay their employees while not bringing in any money at all, and their employees don't even work. Finally. I don't know why I had so much trouble with that. Uh, come here, punk. Got him. So some of these businesses will close and never reopen. Many people will never get their jobs back. Some jobs will be eliminated when people realize, hey, we don't even need this job anymore. We got rid of this guy, realized we don't even need him anymore. So a lot of those fluff jobs that created uh, work for people that otherwise wouldn't have it, those will be gone forever. Okay? There'll be people who worked full time by driving up to a place and working there who the business now realizes, hey... We can pay this person to be a part-time contractor at home. So instead of being a full-time employee with benefits, they're going to go to a part-time contractor with no benefits. Um, there'll be a lot of vandalisms, just random crime from kids that are out of school and perform crimes of opportunity because they're bored. So a lot of stuff will be broken, a lot of windows broken, a lot of uh, abandoned... Or a lot of vacant homes and businesses will be vandalized and broken into. There'll be a lot more graffiti and, and uh, other types of vandalism like that. So society uh, at large will just look worse, which tends to encourage more crime. You know, New York found out that when you fix those little things, when you get rid of the graffiti, the gang graffiti, when you fix the broken windows, people tend to think, oh, this is a, a decent area. And when the area looks horrible and there's, there's vandalism everywhere, there's graffiti everywhere, there are broken windows everywhere, busted up broken down cars here and there, then, then people tend to think that this is a high crime area and they just act like criminals. Um, they called it the uh, broken window theory, I think. You can look it up. Uh, something New York did to improve their city, and they've improved their city substantially. And most of that happened under uh, Mayor Rudy Giuliani, who, by the way, was a Republican. Democrats ran that city into the ground for decades. And, uh, of course, now they're doing it again with de Blasio. He's running that thing into the ground. He created all these new policies for the police there, and crime, of course, increased. And No big surprise. Um, you know, it's amazing 
how all of these good intentions turn out so poorly in reality. That's the biggest problem I have with the Democrat Party is it's all about good intentions and good ideas and good thoughts on the surface, on the superficial level, that utterly fail when put into practice. So it's, it's like communism or socialism. It's a good idea on the surface. It sounds like a great idea. It sounds really friendly and millennials jump on it and kids like the idea. It's a very kind of childish mindset. Think that everyone's just going to share and we're all going to be happy and hold hands and sing Kumbaya. And it denies basic human reality. Basic human nature says we don't do that. And of course, we don't. And then you see communist societies or socialist societies always fall apart because there's a really super wealthy class and everyone else is poor. So in a sense, it sort of makes most people equal to each other. I mean, everyone's equally poor and miserable and lacks freedom. So it's kind of achieving its goal in one way, you know? Or, you know, and the other thing, too, is, like, I'm just amazed at how many millennials criticize capitalism and criticize typical gender roles and uh, talk about all this stuff, like, you know, and they virtue signal like they're special. I'm like, dude, every other fucking millennial is just like you and talks just like you and believes just like you, and they all think they're special. Like, they're s super specially open-minded and open to new possibilities. I'm like, no, everyone about your age believes this crap. If, if somebody said they, if, if a millennial supported capitalism and specifically fought against socialism, that would be unique. A millennial arguing for socialism, not unique at all. That's normal for them. That's, that's uh, typical. That's like the popular opinion among their group. Woo! Oh shit. I don't think I've died to him in a long time, and I don't plan to this time either. Ooh. How did he not hit me that second time? It looked like it phased right through me. I'll take it, though. Oh! Yes! Oh, take this! Take that! And that! The Great Grey Wolf Sith. Oh, shit. Oh. Woo! Whoops. Oh! Okay. He's being tricky today. There, we got him. Okay, he should be he should be uh hobbling now. No. Really? Okay. Now? Well, whatever. He's gone. Done. Oh, uh one of the other things, guys, about this illness. How can you tell that this illness is a bunch of baloney? And those in media and government know it? Because watch Trump's daily briefings on this illness. Watch them. They're bickering and laughing and snickering about whether it's the Chinese virus or Kung Flu or all this other crap. And whether it's racist or this or that. And I'm like, come on now, guys. Seriously. If this were a big deal, if everyone was really worried that we're all going to die, that there's going to be just millions of deaths from this, they wouldn't be arguing about racism and making jokes about the Kung Flu. I love that one reporter. She's like, uh, there are supposedly reports that uh, one official at the White House referred to it as the Kung Flu. And Trump called her on her bullshit. Who? Who said that? Well, I, I don't know. Uh, well, who was the one that reported that? Who's telling you this? She made that shit up. She heard the term Kung Flu, thought it was funny, thought they could use that as a racism angle against Trump and his administration. She just makes up some bullshit of, oh, well, supposedly there's a story of somebody somewhere in the Trump administration saying bullshit. Bullshit. She 100% just made that up off the top of her head. 100% false. That, guys, is fucking fake news. That's what the news is. Totally, utterly fake. Even when what they're saying is technically true, they're presenting it in a manner that makes it fake. And what I mean by that is, not that everything about it is completely false, but that the presentation, the, the way the information is presented, is misleading. It misleads you to believe something that's not true. This whole situation with the illness. If they treated the flu like this, you would think the flu was the next deadly uh, pandemic that was going to kill us all. But they don't treat the flu like this. If they did, you'd think it was a really, really big fucking deal. Just like you think this illness is a really, really big fucking deal because of how they're telling it to you. How they're telling the story to you. How the story is told makes a big difference in your perception of the story. Don't be confused, guys. 
this really isn't that big a deal. Is it bad? Yeah. Okay. Is it worse than the flu? Maybe. I don't know. We haven't seen that yet. It hasn't panned out yet. So far, no. So far, and it, so far in general, no. Um, however, I'm not saying it won't pan out to be true that it was worse than the flu. I, you know, I don't know. All I can tell you is the way we're responding to it, the way we're reacting to it, is fucking worse than the illness itself. What we are doing is causing more damage and more harm more long-lasting consequences on people's lives than the illness itself. What we're doing is absolutely fucking stupid. And I can't believe how many people support it. I bet most of you out there listening to it support it, and you think I'm the crazy one. Well, I'm the one here saying, hey, maybe we shouldn't criminalize going out in groups. Maybe we shouldn't criminalize holding a church service. Maybe we shouldn't criminalize businesses being open for customers to walk into the business. Maybe this isn't a good idea. Maybe this is literally like fucking Nazi Germany where neighbors are reporting their neighbors for violating the quarantine, the stay-at-home order. I mean, it's... That's what scares me. I'm not scared of this illness. Illness doesn't scare me. I mean, it could hurt me. Shoot, I could die from it. I don't know, but that's probably not what I need to worry about. What I need to worry about is... All these chuckle fucks out there giving up every single last right they have. Gladly giving up everything to the government and the media. Just believing it, hook, line, and sinker. I mean, they're sitting there with their mouths open, just can't wait for the next little bit of bait to go in there. You know, this right now is a prime example whether you are truly a sheep or not. Nobody thinks they're a sheep. It's kind of like advertising. Everyone agrees that advertising works, but they don't think it works on them. It's like cancer. People get cancer. Cancer is really common. I guess more than 50% of people will get cancer in their lifetime, but it won't happen to me. I'm not going to get cancer. That's how we think. People get killed by drunk drivers. I won't be killed by a drunk driver. That happens to other people. Well, it's the same thing. There's this belief that it's just this thing that's out there. Advertising works on people, but it doesn't work on me because I'm special and I don't fall for it. Okay, nobody wants to think that they're a sheep and that they just believe everything the government and media tell them. Okay, what's your position on this illness? I bet you it's the exact same position being presented to you by the government and the, and the media. Did you do any, any independent research on it? Be honest. Have you, have you sought out alternative sources of information that are giving a different point of view? Or are you just sitting there listening to the same media and the same government telling you the same shit over and over again? Have you sought out information from alternative uh, competing sources? Have you said, hey, wait a minute, let me see if there are any other sources of information out there saying something different. And if you want that, follow me on Twitter because I'm posting it. Uh, in the previous episode of this, I posted a link to a Twitter thread I have, trying to dispel the myths around this thing, trying to put it in perspective, trying to say, hey guys, actually, this is not that big a deal. Actually, we shouldn't be doing this. Actually, what we're doing is worse than the illness itself. And I hate to be that guy that's like, well, actually, guys, but this is the thing. If you are not a sheep, then don't act like it. Right now... If you quack like a duck, you look like a duck, you walk like a duck, you have feathers like a duck, I'm going to think you're a duck. I'm going to call you a duck. So if you are doing and believing exactly what the government and the media are telling you about this, then you are a sheep. You are. Because you haven't sought out anything else. You really, really, really need to start intentionally looking for sources of information that disagree with the common narrative. Whatever is being pushed out there. It's always a good idea. Yeah, go ahead and read some shit by the Flat Earthers, okay? It, do it doesn't convince me. Have I read Flat Earth websites? Yeah. Have I watched a Flat Earth video? I think I've watched two. It doesn't convince me at all, but I, I gave it a chance. I looked at it. Did I think it would change my opinion? No, I didn't. But, you know, I took a look at it. I like to hear competing viewpoints. I follow people on Twitter who completely completely disagree with me on just about everything 
And when I challenge them, it's sad to see how many of them block me. They can't stand it. Everyone says that you shouldn't form a, an echo chamber. But everyone fucking forms an echo chamber. That's You go out there, you form the very echo chamber you say that no one else should form. People are hypocrites. Well, you know, people should get have friends of different political persuasions and, and engage with people and have debates. And yeah, I agree too. Are you actually doing that? Because I am. I am. All right? I have friends that their politics are totally contrary to mine. I follow people on social media. Their politics, their viewpoints, their religion, totally contrary to mine. All right? I even follow people that sometimes I feel like might be scam or con artists, but just sometimes kind of seeing what they're saying. Some of the people in the Manosphere, like, you got to watch this, guys, okay? Here, here's something to be aware of about these Manosphere guys. If there's some guy out there telling you that he's rich, he's just filthy rich, okay? Right? I don't need that Sif soul. Well, uh, let me hang on to that for now. He's talking about how rich he is and how much money he makes and all this other shit, right? And here he is on Twitter hustling really hard to try to get you to buy his $85 ebook or to pay for his little program or to do his, uh, his uh, what do they call it, um, mentoring or counseling sessions or pay for him to, to mentor you and if he is a millionaire, if this guy is really a multi-millionaire, as you would believe from his photo of him in a Lamborghini or McLaren, whatever, that he paid somebody to do. Like, he went out, rented this thing, or found someone that had a had a two, one or two fancy cars, and then did a whole bunch of photos in different places, and then he uses that on social media to look like he's, he's rich. And here he is, hustling hard every day on Twitter, on Facebook, on Instagram, trying to get you... To buy into his program. To buy his ebooks. He's a multi-millionaire. And he can make you a multi-millionaire too. You just need to buy his $85 ebook. I'm like. Dude. If I were a multi-millionaire. If I had. 10, 20 million dollars in the bank. Multiple sources of revenue. A bunch of fancy exotic cars. Why would I be spending my time. Hustling. For hours on end, trying to get you to come pay me uh, 40 or 50 or 100 bucks for a counseling session or uh, what do they call those? I can't even think of the term for it. Mentoring session. They do, um, gosh, I can't even think of the term. I always forget terms when I'm doing these these uh, streams. Well, play dudes in this case. I forget it during streams too. Um... They want, they want you to sign up for their program. They want you to, you know, even, and, and granted, okay, they tell you that their time is valuable and all this stuff, so, and we've discussed this before. If they're a multi-millionaire, they're bringing in millions. I would assume they're bringing in, what, hundreds of thousands a year, if not more? At least a hundred, two hundred thousand dollars a year, at least, in order to maintain their millionaire status. If that's the case... Why would they spend hours every day hustling to sell you on their little programs and ebooks and then sell you an hour of their time for $150, $200, $250? Let's say they sell you an hour of their time for $300. What is that to them? What What is another $300 going to do for them? Nothing. It, it's like a drop in the bucket for them. Let's say you make $50,000. Would you sell an hour of your time to somebody for 50 cents? That's what they're doing, essentially. Let, let me put it in perspective, okay? You make a thousand, you make 50,000 a year, but you're on Twitter hustling to get people to pay you 50 cents an hour to counsel them. Does that make sense at all? Of course not. So be aware of Kano's out there. There's one that I followed for a while because he was kind of funny and interesting at times. And he occasionally said some useful stuff, but I just had to quit because, I mean, he was just saying the dumbest, stupidest shit. It, it became almost comical, the dumb shit he would say. Um, at one point, he was like, man, when I'm with my girls, I slap them, I spit on them, I call them bitch, I tell them they're stupid. And they love it. I'm like, okay, I just, this is, this is getting really dumb. You know, and of course, he'd show himself with these hot chicks and in exotic cars and that's kind of the standard thing you do to show how much of a alpha male you are i'm a millionaire i got i'm surrounded with hot chicks i got six different exotic lamborghinis and mclarens but 
I'm spending hours every day on social media trying to convince you to pay me a couple bucks. Hmm. Something doesn't fit. Am I right, guys? Think about it. So, anyway. If you're not a sheep, then you question things. You don't just do what you're told. You don't just follow everyone else. You're not just a lemming all going in a line with everyone else. You question things. I question everything, for the most part. I mean, I don't question that water is wet, granted, but <laughs> you know what I mean. And I'm sitting here looking at this whole situation with this illness, and there's so much that doesn't make sense. They're telling us that they're going to shut everything down. It's just until the end of March, or it's just until mid mid-April. But then they're canceling shit in August, September, October, canceling school for the rest of the year, but they're telling us it's just for a couple weeks. If this is just for a couple weeks, why is school canceled for the rest of the year? Why are events canceled in September? You ever thought, do you not think about this stuff, guys? I mean, it's amazing. We all like to think that we're very intelligent. We all like to think that we're above the masses. We're not just one of the sheeple. Well, no, most of us are. Am I, though? Well, I'm not the one following everyone else. I'm not the one pushing all this bullshit, you know, government and media propaganda. Because that's what it is. This stay at home, you're safe at home, shut down all your businesses, don't go to church, lose your job. That's This is all government bullshit. This is all media propaganda. And so many people out there, including probably most of you listening to this, buy right into it now maybe just maybe i hope you're starting to question it after listening to me maybe you you're looking at some of these resources out there that are saying hey hold on now people this illness is not that big a deal what we're doing is worse than the illness and maybe you'll start to question it so what can you do talk to your local politicians speak out on social media speak out to your friends and family now here's the thing though let me tell you something guys when you're not a sheep People will mock you and make fun of you. It's, you know, people think that when you're an independent thinker, that it's just all, it's all good. People will mock you. They'll make fun of you for being stupid. They'll talk about you, you like you're an idiot. They will shame you, endlessly shame you into submission and compliance with the rest of the sheeple. Start speaking out against this illness in the stay-at-home orders. Start speaking out on your Facebook page and watch what your friends and family say to you. They'll tell you that you're an idiot. They'll tell you that you're killing grandma. They'll tell you how dangerous you're being and how you need to listen to what you're being told. They will shame you into compliance. They will make you feel like you're being bad because you're not a sheeple. This is why most people are sheep. Because to not be a sheep is very very dangerous you could get arrested okay a pastor who was not a sheep he held services they arrested him when you're a sheep life is generally easier you just buy into the shit propaganda you just follow along you do what you're told you just live your life plain and simple nothing special but when you're not a sheep when you're an independent thinker life is a lot harder because you realize oh Oh, what I'm being told isn't true. This is not safe. We shouldn't be doing this. We're destroying the economy without a just cause. You start to realize, oh crap. These people in charge, they don't necessarily know what they're doing. They're not necessarily looking out for my best interest. You know that stimulus bill, that $2 trillion stimulus bill that Trump passed? I'm in 100% disagreement with it. We don't need checks being sent out to us. We need our jobs back. Okay? We need our jobs back. Why is uh Why is that not open? Did I, did have we not fought Quaylag yet? I thought we did. I thought we already beat Quaylag. Am I crazy? Maybe we didn't fight Quaylag yet. Hmm. I guess not. Let's go back to Lordran or uh Firelink Shrine. This is Lordran. And then we'll call the episode there. And 500 billion of that went to the big banks. But I still owe my mortgage. Don't get confused, guys. This is not mortgage forgiveness. This is not rent forgiveness. You're not skipping a payment. You're, you're being told that you can delay the payment. 
you still owe it all. You still have to pay it all. Your credit card and the APR might be put on hold, the interest rate. But you still have to pay it. Your student loans might be put on hold, but you still have to pay them. So if I still have to pay my mortgage and you still have to pay your rent, why do the big banks get $500 billion? What's that for? Hmm. Really gets the noggin jogging, doesn't it? It's almost as if this is just a way for big corporations and banks to get all of our money. And for us to be suckers and to think that the government's doing something good for us. How many times does the government transfer millions and billions of dollars to corporations and tell us it's for our own good? Here's the thing you have to understand. They might send you 1200 bucks and a check, okay? How long does that pay your mortgage or your rent? How long? They're not sending you $20,000. They're sending banks $500 billion. Big banks and corporations. Really, more than that went to the big banks and corporations, but $500 billion. Guys, just like Obama, taking all our tax dollars and handing it off to giant corporations. So they can do stock buybacks and pad their pockets while their employees are sitting at home waiting for the $1,200 check to show up so they can barely make ends meet for the month. Thanks, government. You really, you really helped us out. Let me ask you a question. You making more money or less because of this? More or less? That's the question to ask yourself. Are you better off because of this situation? I think the answer for the vast, vast majority of Americans is absolutely not. Well, guys, kind of a downer episode, but that's how it goes sometimes. I am Fox with Foxio Games. If you guys enjoyed it, hit the like button. Leave your comments below. I do read them all. I reply when I have something useful to say in response. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't already. Hit the notification bell icon. Select all if you want to see all my videos. I, I should be doing a uh, kind of semi-review of Doom Eternal soon. I just got to play it a little more. And then uh, you guys can follow me on social media. Twitter is where I'm most active. All the links are in the description. And with that, I will see you guys next time. Later.